in this problem, we have 2a plus b makes c and 2d. We're going to start with a's and b's. We're going to combine them. We see initial rates, and we have several concentration mixes that were used. Given this data, solve out the orders of the different concentrations in the rate law and solve the k forward. Go ahead and give it a try and come on back. All right, if you're back, remember that your rate is equal to your K times your concentration of reactants. So A to the something power times B to the some other power. Our coefficients do not affect this. These are based on the mechanism. And while we're not exploring exactly what mechanism is, we can figure out what order these reactants affect the rate law with. Unfortunately, we don't have those orders just given to us. We have to solve them. For this, we need to compare different runs. If I do another run, I'll have the same K value, but I'll have other rates depending on the concentrations. The ratio of our rates are going to be dependent on the ratio of our chemicals and their orders. When comparing two, if you have some data that is the same for both, that section will cancel out when we compare them. So our first job here is probably to use run one and two. Compound B and the exponent Y will cancel out as there's no change in compound B. The concentration of compound A will differ and we'll be able to see what effect that has on the rate. We'll look at rate one versus rate two, and we will compare these. For one, we have 0 0.03 must equal the k forward 0 0.5 to the x times 0 0.5 to the y, so our a and b concentrations. Run two, 0 0.0012 must equal same k forward. Concentration of A is 0 0.02 to the X, and the concentration of B is 0 0.5 to the Y. As we said, this component is the same top and bottom. They will cancel out. Our K values as well will cancel out. What we end with is 0 0.03 divided by 0 0.0012 must equal 0 0.5 to the X over 0 0.02 to the x. Remember that if you're to the x on top and bottom, you can take that out and get 0 0.5 over 0 0.02, all of that to the x, which means that we will solve that 25 is equal to 25 to the x. x must be 1. So we'll find that we are first order in regards to a. Knowing this, knowing the value for x, we can now use any mixes to solve for b. There is no consistent concentrations for a. They change all over. However, because we know the exponent for them, now that we've solved it from our first calculation here, we can factor that out when we then go and calculate out y, the order for compound b. To that, let's go ahead and use 1 and 3. Well, 1 again, 0 0.03 must equal my k value, 0 0.5 to the first, and 0 0.5 to the y. Aside from that, the rate for run 3, 6.48 times 10 to the minus 6 must equal same k. 0 0.03 to the first, 0 0.03 to the y. Despite having the same concentrations on top and bottom, which normally would mean we wouldn't be able to see any difference if we didn't know the exponents. We needed to have one thing constant and one thing change in our first calculation to see what was different from that one thing. But now we know the order for a, 
we can factor out how much its effect changes. In this case, our k's will cancel for being the same. Everything else sticks around. We'll find that 0 0.03 divided by 6.48 times 10 to the minus 6. 4, 6, 2, 9 is going to equal 0.5 divided by 0 0.03. 16.667 from our a's times, well, 0.5 divided by 0 0.03 to the y, 16.667 to the y. And so we did the same thing we did with x's. We pulled it out and put it on top. 0.5 divided by 0.33 was the same for x and b. Run 1 and run 3 had identical concentrations for a and b in each run. So our division of them gives us the same values here. However, that's still going to let us solve for y because we knew that they were first order for a. We need to divide by 16.667. So that'll get rid of one of those. 277.78 is going to equal 16.667 to the y. But we can take the log of both sides. Log of 277.78 is going to equal the y times the log of 16.667. Remember your log rule. If you have something to an exponent, the log of that thing is the exponent times the log of that thing. Which means y, if we go and divide by log of 16.667, this will yield our y. The log of 277.8 divided by the log of 16.67 is equal to y, which is equal to 1.99999. It's equal to 2. A little bit of rounding error, but what we find is that y is equal to 2. We now have both orders. This is first in regard to a, and it is second order in regards to b. This then lets us go and solve our k value. Pick any run. Let's go ahead and use run 2. Remember that your rate is equal to your k, your concentration of a to its exponent, your concentration of b to its exponent. 0 0.0012 is equal to the k value, 0 0.02 to the first 0 0.5 to the second. Divide those all over to solve for k. We'll find that our k is 0 0.24. So using concentrations and their initial rate data from several runs with varying concentrations, we are able to solve out the orders and the rate constant for this reaction. Well, it's not necessary to have only one concentration stay the same and the second change in order to find a rate constant ever. It is necessary to solve that first one. Had we just compared run 1 and run 3 initially, we would not have known the exponent that x represented. We would not have been able to calculate out because we would have had two variables to solve. So one run where B was constant and A changed was necessary. However, a second run where A was constant and B changed was not. Once we had the exponents for A, we could use any runs we wanted where A was known and it would factor out as we did the math.